when you have to solve problems that are you're given formulas with, it's important to kind of follow these basic steps. So the first one is identify. So you want to ID or identify your known, basically your givens, and your unknown, what you're trying to find. From here, you can get your formula, which you can rearrange if you need to. Plug in your numbers, then solve. Uh, sig figs, units, units, nice, units, and then box. So looking at this problem, this person is, during a race, Andrea runs with an average velocity of 6.02 meters per second. So this is average velocity right here. I'll make it green. of 6.02 meters per second to the east. So that means she's running in a positive direction, quote unquote. What is Andrea's displacement? So displacement is delta x after 137 seconds. So that's like after a certain amount of time. What is her displacement? So delta, this would be delta t. So looking at this means I know what formula I need now. So I got average velocity equals delta x over delta t. I am trying to get delta x by itself, so I got to multiply both sides by delta t. These will cancel out. You're left with delta t times average velocity equals change uh, equals your displacement. So all you got to do now is plug in your numbers, and you got to double check your units though before you know when you're done. There's a reason why I wrote it like this, because you have to look and make sure that your units will cancel out. So if you multiply across, technically this is over one second, so your seconds cancel out, you're left with meters. If you were given a time in hours, you would need to convert it to seconds. Anyway, so you multiply across, you end up with 137 times 6.02, and you end up, for your delta Tx, you end up with 824.74 meters. Um, so three sig figs. One, two, three, look back, 825 meters, and this is comparable to 824. So that the rounding sig figs make sense with this one. Very good. So in this problem, we are trying to calculate displacement, which is different from distance, which I'll talk about later on. So so during quarantine, you sit in the backyard, you notice a green anole walking along a fence, you happen to have a ruler out, and you want to, you decide to get its displacement, if you will. So let's say it begins at a location, and that's x equals 3 centimeters. So let's kind of have our own little ruler, sort of. Uh, so crudely, let's say that this is 0 centimeters. So 1, 2, 3. Very good. So let's say it starts off right here. And then it walks to x equals 11. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then it walks to negative 6 centimeters. So it's walking all the way over there. So that means that it is going from, so this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Oh, look at this, negative 6. Very good. So from here it goes all the way back. Let's use a different color. All the way back to negative 6. This is where it stops. So what is its displacement? So remember that your displacement is 
delta x equals x final minus x initial. So my final position was negative 6. And I started from 3 centimeters. So I'm going to subtract 3. So my displacement actually was negative 9 centimeters. It's negative because it ends up going, you ended up going to the opposite side. So for, for like, you know, west versus east, or positive, sorry, negative versus positive. So the negative side, this is west. You can say this is east. So you end up at a negative nine for your total displacement. Sounds kind of weird because you can't really go in a negative, I guess you could, I guess, but you can't really go in a negative direction it's just that in terms of our frame of reference, the final position, the final of negative six is, um, is, how should we say this, is west of where we started from. Okay, so how is this related to distance? Well, this person, this person, this annul, he started from, or he or she, whatever, started from three to 11. So three centimeters to 11 centimeters. That's eight centimeters. And then it walked all the way from 11 down to negative six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's total distance it covered going back and forth was 25 centimeters. That's the distance. Its displacement, however, was negative nine because of where it started originally. So basically it's based on where you start from and where you end up. So, uh, walking deadpans, hopefully you're still out there. Rick and Maggie decide to go on a supply run. They walk with an average velocity of 0 0.92 meters per second eastward. If it takes them 25 minutes to walk to the store, what is our displacement? Notice how I I'm trying to be deliberate with those. So, average velocity, I'm identifying right now. Eastward, so it's positive. It takes them 25 minutes, that's my time. Displacement, delta x. So, average velocity equals delta x over delta t. I am trying to find this. So multiply both sides by delta t, these cancel out. However, notice how my velocity is meters per second. So I gotta convert my minutes to seconds first. So then 25 minutes, throw in some dimensional analysis really quick. One minute is 60 seconds. So that is 1500 seconds. So then I'm going to plug this in the delta t. So it's 1500 seconds times 0 0.29 meters per second eastward. So it's positive. That is my delta x. So 1500 times 0 0.92. This will be 1380 meters. Um, two sig figs right here for both my numbers. So I'm good. So my answer would be one, two, look back here. So 1400 meters, 1380 is close to 1400. So I'm good with that, box it in, very good. So time to think, can displacement be zero? So I'm gonna leave that with y'all. When y'all come into class, we will talk about it, we'll get into more detail, and then we'll move on from there. So that's it for this lecture. So be safe, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you all in class, bye.